This video is the second in a series about using uh, cost distance tools in ArcGIS. Uh, in the first video we reviewed some basic concepts and then demonstrated the fact that for cost distance you need uh, an underlying grid that I've been calling a cost or a friction grid. And these are just some examples. These were the uh, the kind of raster that dictates in some instances where you can move, right? Like in this one, I said, yeah, treat yourself like your Euclidean distance in all these black areas, but I changed everything else to no data. You can't even move through that area. Or actually where I've given a different value um, to each cell, which is going to now factor against its distance, right? In this instance, that value is practical. It's the time, right? The amount of time it would take you in uh, minutes per foot um, to walk. Or something abstract. Right, this one, something that's essentially minutes per foot, but also has a new element, which is uh, you know raising the cost in, a, in to a crazy degree. These areas uh, where where we were saying that my X has the highest possibility of seeing me. Um, so in order to run cost distance, uh, you'd find it under the spatial analyst cost distance, or sorry, distance cost distance toolbar. And so if you open it up, you notice a couple things. Always wants to begin with a source data. Right? Anytime something tells you raster or feature, remember that means it could be either. Right? So this could be a raster, this could be a feature, same thing as Euclidean distance. Um, you know, this is often best thought of as your source, your origin point. You know, but you know, your distance to something, you know, in many cases is the same as its distance to you. Uh, there's obviously some you know, differences in that with one-way streets and such. Um, so you can think of this as a destination, but uh, it's good to think of it also as like a source, your origin. This is where you're going to measure your distance from. Right? You can have multiple sources, but for now we're going to keep it easy with one. And the only real difference between this and Euclidean distance is that it needs a cost raster. Right? You will create your own cost rasters. I can't teach you how to create those. Right? For example, how I did though, just you know, to have an idea, I created a lookup field and then I gave the values I wanted to each one, right? So for ones where I wanted to just be able to pass, um, you know, I gave them values of one, and then whatever I wanted to be no data, right, I just didn't necessarily select, and then just used the lookup tool. Did the same thing to create the walk time one by putting a value here. Uh, but again, it's totally up to you how you're going to create those. I just want to show you once you've created them how you're essentially going to use them. So let's start with the simple one, right? The uh, the one that sort of uh, you know emulates Euclidean distance, but it just removes the streets. So you can't walk on them. You gotta have these like narrow paths that you cross here. So you drag that in, right? That's your underlying cost raster that dictates uh, essentially the toll or the cost of the friction for each grid. Um, I've already kind of uh, created each of these for us, so I'm just going to name this one example real quick just so you can see it be created, and then you know, I'll walk through the other ones that I made as well. And the only real uh, other difference here is this backlink raster. Um, it's, I think it's really good to just get it done, get it out of the way to create it. Um, as I'll show in a second, the distance raster tells you how far you are in whatever unit your cost is in from the source. The backlink tells you how to get there. So it's essentially like a direction. So it'll look a lot like um, a Euclidean um, direction. Um, but it's always good, I think, to create those, you know, just so we can see what they look like. So I'll call it example BL. And then you have this pretty cool addition. Um, you know, only those of you who are using 10.4 and above will see this. Um, you know, it wasn't originally on one of my videos back in the day, but I've updated it because they're pretty cool. Um, so these are just sort of like multipliers or characteristics that you're going to apply to your source. And I'm going to have a separate video that, that shows these uh, one by one, but let's just you know talk about them each real quick. Uh, the multiplier simply would be like if, let's say I had you know multiple things. Maybe I was doing, um, where did that go? Maybe I was doing this one. No, that's not it. There we go. Maybe I had like multiple ones here that I wanted to measure my distance from. And I just 
maybe put like a multiplier value in the field, like 1 for this, 0.5 for this, 2 for this. Well, it would simply multiply that multiplier by the costs, right? So, uh, you know, the way I like to think about these is this one allows me to determine that this is me and, you know, this is somebody who's wearing um, uh, like a cast on their foot, right? They would be slower than me. They would walk maybe at a factor that's like two times slower than me, so I should make sure I add that multiplier to them. Start cost, uh, metaphor I would often use to this is like a, a hospital or a health center, right? So imagine that these are, are three health centers right here, and you wanted to measure your distance from them, which one you could get to first, right? Well, you could measure the distance, which one you'd get to first, but once you get there, you're also probably going to have to wait in line, right, if it's, a, if it's a health clinic to be seen. So what if you could do a cool little equation that took into account not only how far does it take to get to each one, but also... Once you get there, how much extra time you'd be waiting. So that's like start cost. It actually takes a fixed right or a variable cost and applies it at the beginning of each. A cumulative cost is essentially um, like I would say like a, my grandfather who the longer he walks, the more tired he's going to get. Right. So that's what that does here. It acts very similar to the multiplier, but it's a multiplier that increases in intensity as time goes on. And finally, capacity is very similar up here to maximum distance. But whereas maximum distance would make it uniform for everybody, capacity gives you the opportunity to say, like, I'd st I stop after 10 minutes, I stop after 2, I stop after 15 degrees, I stop after 50 feet, however you want. So we'll do another video for those. Um, you know, just want you to be aware of what they are. But for now, let's just run this. We'll take a second to do its thing. All right, we get two kind of outputs here. Let's do the less confusing one first. Um, all right, and so it looks very similar to Euclidean distance. And I, uh, you know, I've created them all here that I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, you know, so we're not going to focus on this one for too long. But uh, right, there's a source that began here, and it simply measures its distance out. Right, and you don't necessarily have this kind of neat. Um, uh, you know, radial thing anymore, almost because you're being pushed in a sense here, right? So you can cross. Or you're being pushed in a sense here, so you could cross. Right? You can also cross there. Right? So that's that's why you're seeing these kind of angle things here that it's a little bit less distance in certain areas because you're being pushed towards certain areas because you can't walk on the street. A backlink looks chaotic, um, but it's super logical. You know, there are eight cells around you, right? We could open the presentation just as an example and imagine you're in the middle here. And what this is saying is like, in order to get to the source from my cell, which direction would I have to go? Would I have to go right, lower right, down, lower left, left, blah, 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 blah. And that's calculated, you know, very similar to how flow accumulation works or how flow direction works. If you imagine water moving down a mountain, just pretend that this is also a surface, except it's not a surface of a mountain, it's a surface of travel time. And the largest and highest peak of your travel time is when you're farthest away from your source, which would be kind of your lowest point. And so if you were here, theoretically, if I wanted to flow my way back to the source, I would simply for each cell be looking at which cell around me is the lowest and following that value. I think my screen protector turned off, so I'm just going to disable that for a second so it's a little bit cleaner to see. All right, so I'm going to delete these two right now because, like I said, I already created uh, examples for each one. And I'll uh, turn those on right now so we can actually see them. All right, if you remember, I created one that was removing the streets, one that was only the pathways, right? So you can't go in the buildings and you can't go on the land. Another that you could go anywhere but the streets, but I gave you a time, a time in minutes, right? So it's fewer minutes to be able to walk on these paths. It's more minutes to walk on buildings. It's the most minutes to walk on grass. And finally, I did one very similar to that, but that got even more abstract by adding like an element of where my X could see me, right? My X could see me in these blue areas, and that's why the cost is the highest. So let's take a look at each one, right? So first... There's the Euclidean distance, right? That's one uh, always easier to, to, to measure. Uh, I started at my source. Euclidean distance brought me outward in a super radial fashion, very easy. Um, got all of them stretched to the same thing between 0 and 415. 
So the next one on top of that was if I couldn't walk on the streets. And it looks somewhat similar, except as you see, there you go, right? Any of the areas that were no data in my input or no data on my output, and I can't walk on the streets. And then finally, the paths, even kind of more funky. Now, it's a little difficult to visually be able to see the difference here, but let's actually analytically test the difference, right? So if I just scrolled into here, and I grab my pixel inspector, and let's say first thing I'll pick is Euclidean, and I'm just going to tap an area here. To get to that area, Euclidean distance, as the crow flies, would be approximately 1,664 feet. If I had removed the streets, it would be 1,818 feet, right? So the removal of the streets, imagine I could just still fly anywhere else but couldn't go on the streets, adds almost another 200. Now I can't go on land or buildings or streets, and it's way higher, right? It's 2,100. You know, you can kind of see that if we compare the two, right? That's path on top of Euclidean distance, right? They're using the same scale, and as you can see, it's a much larger thing. Gets uh, even more interesting when you start to look at some of the others, right? So time, for example, right? What I uh, did for my symbology of time here is actually broken into minute segments, right? So anything here would take two minutes, four minutes, right? Within six minutes. To get to any of these spots would take eight minutes. You know, to get to this one would take between eight and ten, ten to twelve, and so on and so forth. And again, that worked because the cost raster charges you a tax, right, to walk on each path. And that tax for a pathway, right, is cheaper than it is for here, which is why you see certain areas where you'd have to walk on the grass or walk away um, from kind of the paths or the easy areas are a little bit more, um, you know, costly to actually have to walk across. I'm going to turn the display on here just to make that even a little bit easier to see, right? Farther to be able to do it than to walk directly on the path. You can really clearly see that right here, right? As I continue the path, it kind of keeps that open direction following the paths and becomes a lot more costly going out here. And this is probably most, uh, you know, um, emblematic if I were to show you the cost distance from my X1, right? Remember, again, my X1, where these were where my X's were, uh, or mostly hang out, and then these are the areas in red where they could see me using invisibility. And so assuming those things, this is what my cost distance would look like, my X. Now again, this was time, distance, distance, distance. This one's funky. It's a little bit more abstract. What we need to know here is that the low values are definitely lower than the high. And that helps you understand that it actually would feel that much more oppressive in terms of distance. There is so much greater risk. There is so much greater cost in going this small distance than there is in going this entire way around because those are areas of high X, right? High X, high X, high X, high X, high X. So that's cost distance. And as I said before, all it takes is that input of a cost raster, right? So for each one, if I wanted to create the walk time one, I would just drag in the walk time. If I wanted to create the X friction, I would just walk in the X friction. The kind of art to using cost distance a lot of the time is creating those friction grids, right? Those cost grids. In some instances, perhaps, you're simply removing something, right? I'm removing roads. But everything else, I still charge one, right? A factor of one. So I'm saying just accumulate distance, but don't go on the roads. It's the same thing with the path, but a little bit more complex. Sometimes you're actually ascribing totally new values, right? So using the lookup tool from my original grid, I took a value that was minutes, right? Minutes per foot that I felt it would take to walk. That was the speed, minutes per foot. And I ascribed different ones for different types of land cover that I might move over. Then I took something which is totally different. It's not time, it's not distance, it's kind of a bit of both, but it's also just weird and abstract. It says it feels so much more intense. There's so much greater risk, there's so much greater cost walking in an area where my ex could potentially see me. So when I model the cost distance, make that area seem much more restrictive than the areas around it. So that's cost distance, very easy to run. Uh, but the next video, we're actually going to introduce cost path. Right, which is going to take not only the distance, 
but these backlinks, right? These things I was talking about before that are the directions, right, that you would have to take. And we're going to use those to actually be able to see a path that you would take to get from one point to another.